Hey everyone, so today we are talking about our last topic which is intermolecular forces. And these actually explain pretty much why everything is the certain way it is at room temperature. Why is water a liquid? Why is salt a solid? Why is the air we breathe and gas form at room temperature? This intermolecular forces explains all of this. There's no math. It's all just conceptual. So our goal today is to be able to identify intermolecular forces in certain molecules. So what are intermolecular forces? Well, what we usually have been talking about in ionic and covalent bonding has been intramolecular forces. So intramolecular forces are just these bonds in between atoms, okay? Those are intramolecular forces. But intermolecular forces are the forces in between molecules. If you remember, we were drawing dipole moments, right? Uh, this hydrogen actually becomes partially positive, and this oxygen becomes partially negative. That little symbol right there that looks like a fish, that just means partially. So when these electrons are getting pulled closer to one atom or another, uh, one becomes partially negative, one becomes partially positive. Well, when you start interacting with other water molecules, this actually creates kind of a bond. This little intermolecular force, it keeps it together. This you might see every day in water beating up, okay? When it beats up, it's those intermolecular forces that are keeping it together, giving it that nice round shape. You might have put drops on a penny to see how many uh, can fit on a penny. That rounded dome is due to those intermolecular forces. And there's actually four types that we're going to deal with, and I'm going to go from strongest to weakest. The strongest one we deal with is ionic. Okay, We know what ionic bonds are. It's the same type of intermolecular force. It's between ionic compo compounds. So whenever we see a metal and a nonmetal, we're thinking ionic intermolecular forces. So if you're looking at something like, say, NaCl that's bonded together, right? There's a complete transfer of electrons. So this isn't partially negative. This is completely negative, and that sodium is completely positive. Well, then when it gets uh, around other salt molecules or NaCl molecules, they form this nice, strong intermolecular force. Okay, and these it, at room temperature are usually solids. Okay. All ionic bonds that you deal with are usually solids. NaCl, silver nitrate, all the chemicals that I have that are in solid form are ionically bonded. Okay, And this is kind of uh, explains the crystalline structure that salt has as well. If we look at uh, uh, molecular representation of Na and Cl, uh, you will see that, actually this should be Cl and this should be Na. When they get around other ones, they form this cool intermolecular crystalline solid and they form this nice block of salt that turns into a crystalline structure when we look at it underneath a microscope. So our first and strongest intermolecular force is ionic. It's between a metal and a nonmetal, and they are usually solids. That is good to know. The next intermolecular force we deal with is hydrogen bonding. Okay, what is hydrogen bonding? Hydrogen bonding is just when a hydrogen is bonded to an NO or F. And that's it. It's just an H bonded to an NO or F. And now that we know how to draw Lewis structures, this should be really easy to identify. Examples of this are water, okay, H bonded to an O, uh, hydrofluoric acid, that is also hydrogen bonding. Uh, NH3, these, this is also hydrogen bonding. Okay, these are all H's bonded to a NO or a F. But HCl, that is not hydrogen bonding. Okay, that is an H bonded to a Cl. There is not enough of an electronegativity difference there. That is why it's hydrogen bonding. It's so strong. It's because there's a huge electronegativity with NO and F but those are your most electronegative elements. That's why there's such a misdistribution of 
electrons there, right? And I showed you that example with our H2O, right? You got a partially positive here, you got a partially negative, you got a, another H2O molecule, partially negative, partially positive, and it forms a nice little intermolecular bond that causes that beating on, uh, say, your shower door or on the edge of your cup or something like that. These guys are mostly liquids, okay? Mostly liquids. So you're seeing the stronger it is, the more likely they're going to be closer together. You're going to get a solid. Okay, here, they're strong, but they're not strong enough to form a solid. They're easier to turn into solids. Water's pretty easy to turn into a solid. We just got to get it to zero degrees Celsius. But at room temperature, it's typically a liquid. The next one we're going to talk about is dipole, dipole. Okay, and these are polar molecules. Okay, so if you see a polar molecule that doesn't have hydrogen bonding or is an ionic, it is dipole dipole intermolecular force. And an example of this is HCl. Okay? HCl. It's not hydrogen bonding because it's not to NO or F. It's actually bonded to a less electronegative element that is just polar. Okay? It's a decent intermolecular force. Uh, you get slightly partially positive here, partially positive there, and you get, or partially negative, partially positive, and you get a somewhat strong intermolecular force there. Not as strong as hydrogen bonding, not as strong as ionic bonding, but still decently strong. HCl is an acid, it is a liquid at room temperature, but these dipole dipoles can also be gases. And your last intermolecular force is London dispersion forces. And I'm going to move the camera, don't you worry. London Dispersion Forces, okay? Or LDFs is what I call them because I don't want to write out London Dispersion Forces all the time. LDFs. These are also known as van der Waals. Okay, these are nonpolar molecules. Okay, the best examples of these are N2, O2, CO2. Nitrogen, oxygen, CO2. What are all these at room temperature? They're all gases, okay? These are non-polar molecules that don't really have a misdistribution of electrons. But let me show you what happens. These are all gases, by the way, at room temperature. But let me show you what happens with what causes there to be intermolecular forces. So nitrogen has a bunch of electrons around it, right? Bees around a beehive. So you've got all these electrons kind of chilling around, and there's no polar moment, right? There's no electrons getting pulled more to one side or another because these are nonpolar. But when all those electrons are zooming around the beehive, every now and then, a couple more bees or electrons end up on one side of the hive than the other. This causes just a slight, a slight partially negative charge and a slight partially positive charge on the other side of this molecule. This allows it to somewhat have an intermolecular force with other nitrogen molecules, but it's very weak. So weak that it is a gas at room temperature. Okay, so here are your four intermolecular forces. We see if it's ionic, if it's not ionic, we see if it's hydrogen bonding, and then we just keep going down the list to dipole, dipole, and LD. F. Okay, so let's go ahead, let's go through a couple examples, and let's think about what kind of intermolecular forces these have, and how that seems in real life. So, let's go ahead and erase this, and let's do some examples here. So first one I'm going to do is I am going to go ahead and I will do CH3 CL. Okay, CH3 CL. I'm looking at this guy and I'm thinking, is this ionically bonded? Well, 
No, it's not ionically bonded. These are all nonmetals. It's covalently bonded. So it's definitely not ionic. So let's go to hydrogen bonding. I know when I draw the Lewis structure of this that I look at this. Are those H's bonded to an NO or F? No, it is not hydrogen bonding. So now I'm looking, is this thing polar or nonpolar? I look at this. Is there going to be a misdistribution of electrons here? Yes, that chlorine is going to pull those electrons more its way. So this guy is indeed polar. And remember, our polar molecules that are not hydrogen bonding or ionic are dipole. Dipole. Okay, dipole, dipole. Let's go on to another one. Let's look at NH. Three, NH3. If we're looking at this guy, we say, is it ionically bonded? Metal and non-metal? No. Nitrogen's a non-metal. Hydrogen's a non-metal. Hydrogen bonding, is this an N, O, or F bonded to an H? Hey, it is, right? If we look at this, we got three H's bonded to an N. So this is definitely hydrogen bonding. Let's do one more. Let's look at Cl2. All right, definitely not ionically bonded. Okay, it's two nonmetals. It's definitely not hydrogen bonding. There's not even a hydrogen there to make a hydrogen bonding. And it's not polar, right? Cl and Cl have the same amount of pull. So this guy is nonpolar, which makes it LDF, London dispersion forces. It's a nonpolar molecule, it's very weak. It's usually a gas. So if I'm looking at these three guys, let's start thinking conceptually here. Which one is going to have the highest boiling point? Okay, which one is going to have the highest boiling point? Now let's think about that. Which one is going to take the most energy for it to boil, right? A high boiling point, let's say, is just like 100 degrees Celsius. A low boiling point is something like zero degrees Celsius. So which one is going to be the hardest to boil. So again, we're focusing on highest boiling point. So which one is going to be the hardest to boil? Well, let's look at these guys. Cl2, it's a London dispersion force, right? That is a really weak intermolecular force. Chlorine is a gas at room temperature. So actually, that one's really easy to boil. It has a low boiling point. In fact, at room temperature, it's already boiling, okay? So then that leaves us with dipole, dipole, and hydrogen bonding. Okay, well, which one is the strongest? Which one has the strongest intermolecular force that are going to be the hardest to break and turn it into a gas? Well, remember that hydrogen bonding is our second strongest. Dipole, dipole, this is uh, one chloromethane. It's actually a gas. Okay, it's gas at room temperature. This NH3 is actually a liquid for most part at room temperature. Okay, so this is NH3 has our highest boiling point because it's got such a strong intermolecular force that it takes a lot of energy in order to turn it into a gas or to boil it. Okay, so be thinking of stuff like that, right? Be thinking of what uh, a strong intermolecular force means as far as states of matter and make sure that you're able to identify each intermolecular force. Let's do one more, actually, before I move on. Let's look at BH3. Okay, BH3. Boron trihydride. Okay, I'm looking at this guy. Is it ionic? No, those are two nonmetals. Okay, so it's definitely not ionically bonded. Hydrogen bonding. There is hydrogen, but is it bonded to an NO or F? No. Boron trihydride looks like this, correct? So it's not hydrogen bonding. So we got to go down to dipole, dipole, or LDF. Is it polar? No, there's no lone pair on that central atom, right? Boron is one of those ones that only likes to be surrounded by six. Each hydrogen is pulling with the same strength, so that's not polar. It's actually nonpolar, so it is an L. Okay, that's my last example. 
Make sure you know how to list those, what intermolecular forces are, and have yourselves a good day.